Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and we're going to be starting our adventure right here on this unusual exoplanet known as Gliese 876d. This is what's known as a super earth and what makes this particular planet very unusual is that it has a very very high density and also uh, by sort of association extremely high gravity, surface gravity. Um, we think it's anywhere between 1.9 to possibly 3.3 g's, which is basically um, 1.9 to 3.3 times higher than the gravity of Earth. And we also think that uh, this is not the only such planet. We believe that there are actually quite a lot of um, super Earths out there whose gravity is much higher than Earth. And in this video, I wanted to discuss one of the recent papers that essentially discusses the idea of so how much gravity can you actually survive or at least uh, tolerate without really feeling too uncomfortable? In other words, if we were to actually come here one day, well, despite the fact that it's super hot, if we were to come to a similar planet that has really high gravity, how much could we possibly handle? Now, for this study, uh, the scientists actually used a relatively realistic example of a real person carrying real heavy weights and it's actually someone you probably already know especially if you watch a very famous tv show known as game of thrones the actor who plays sir gregor uh, clegane uh, i believe his actual name is okay i'm going to totally butcher this but half thor julius bjornsson possibly Anyway, he has a very complicated Icelandic name. Um, he's actually, uh, currently at least, a record holder for a lot of different things, including um, basically being the strongest man right now. And he was actually able to carry a log that was approximately 1430 pounds or about just over 700 kilograms um, for several steps. And this was the world record and it essentially let us understand what human body could potentially withstand in terms of the actual gravitational forces. And the paper that you can find in the description below by Nikola Polyak um, actually goes through this analysis and uses a relatively simple but quite detailed analysis of uh, human bones, human structure, and uh, essentially the record from the uh, actor from the Game of Thrones, whose name I'm not going to try to pronounce again. Um, and finds the actual sort of limit of human body and then converts it to um, gravitational forces. Now, interestingly, we actually do know that um, human femur or the leg bone can actually withstand um, up to about 90 Gs as long as it sort of lays still on the ground. But as soon as you start moving it around, like for example, as soon as you take a step, um, more Gs are applied and that would actually most likely crush the bone. So you can't really expect uh, the femur to survive more than approximately 5 to 6 Gs. But what about other bones? Other bones are way more fragile. And so for this reason, we actually have to kind of downestimate this a little bit. And uh, in this particular paper, they make an assumption that as soon as you start moving around and as soon as you're not still anymore, the actual gravitational forces um, increase by about, well, 10 times or so. So that means that even though uh, a femur could survive 90 Gs, once you start moving, it can only survive maybe 9 Gs and other bones even less so. And the other assumption here is that um, when Sir Gregory actually carried the log, um, he most likely experienced sort of the maximum possible force you could experience without breaking anything. And so they actually use this as the ultimate limit to how much we can handle. And so for Sir Gregory, they estimate that his limit was about 4.6 Gs, at which point he could maybe make a few steps and then most likely would collapse. For a normal person, it would be a little bit less, maybe about 4.4 to 4.5, with the same effects. You could maybe make a few steps and then collapse. While uh, for us to actually kind of normally, well, not really collapse right away, but at least have a few steps, anything over 3 to 4 Gs is already too extreme. We would not be able to handle it, so it would have to be less than 3 Gs. So um, for us not to have any serious effects on our health and still be able to survive, it can be up to essentially 4.5 to 4.6 Gs. But for us to actually live normally, or at least uh, somewhat comfortably, it has to be way, way less. And so right here at 3Gs, this is where the extreme limit begins. 
and anywhere from I guess one to three G's is to some extent uh, something we can actually handle. And interestingly, we've already discovered um, over 400 planets, exoplanets, that have these relatively high um, dense conditions with a lot of surface gravity. As a matter of fact, uh, we think that it's going to be closer to 500 soon. So these planets are actually very common. Now, we don't really know if we'll ever be able to visit them or if we'll ever be able to walk on them. But understanding our limits is really important. Now, we obviously know that we can survive low-G conditions, although our bones actually start becoming weaker and weaker, and our bodies don't really handle low-G very well, at least in the long term. But nevertheless, high-Gs would become more of a problem if we become interstellar species. So once we start visiting other planets, and once we actually come, well, maybe to even this planet, um, the planet also known as Gliese 876d, maybe just maybe we'll actually start feeling these effects as well. And Gliese system actually has several planets. This is its neighbor, Gliese 876e. And so, yeah, there's definitely a lot of planets out there that we could potentially land on, visit and walk on. But, you know, walking on some of these high surface gravity planets would not be very easy. It would most likely destroy our bodies completely. Not to mention, of course, that we probably would not even be able to take off those planets anymore because on takeoff, the gravitational acceleration would increase dramatically and uh, would most likely basically crush our bodies. But that's another story for another day. For now, I think it's a pretty cool paper. Check it out. It's actually really easy to read and has some really, really cool facts in it. Um, I'm posting the link for this in the description below. Thank you for watching. Hopefully now you know a little bit more about, um, well, what we can't really survive, and that's high G's. And most importantly, uh, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this video with someone who enjoys learning about space and sciences through simulations and video games. I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye-bye.